Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, February 6, 2019 edition of the Science and Earth Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. If you have been in security for a while, you probably heard of Mimikatz. Mimikatz is a great exploit tool that allows you to get passwords out of memory and password hashes and the like that the operating system may use to authenticate. Of course, once an attacker has this data, they can then use it in order to impersonate various users. This technique is probably the favorite thing to do for an attacker after the initial access to a system on your network and defending against these Mimikatz attacks should be a high priority. Rob's diary today goes over a number of different methods that you can use in order to block this attack. Now, the problem here is a little bit the way uh, Rob puts it, it's a cat and mouse game between good guys, bad guys, in that uh, there are more than one way to actually get these credentials out of memory. So you have to be really careful that you're up to date on your protections. So take a look at Rob's write up and see if there's anything that you forgot in your environment. In the open source office suite world, there are really two very similar products that you often see in Linux environments. OpenOffice, which originally came out of Sun, but is currently being maintained by the Apache Foundation, and LibreOffice, which sort of split off OpenOffice during the time when it was owned by Oracle after Oracle acquired Sun. But overall, LibreOffice, OpenOffice tend to be somewhat similar, even though they have diverged a little bit over the last couple years. Well, uh, one important problem now why you may want to consider using LibreOffice instead of OpenOffice, aside from politics like who exactly owns the code and what open source license is being applied to it, a recent remote code execution vulnerability has only been patched in LibreOffice, but so so far has not been patched in OpenOffice. A proof of concept exploit has been demonstrated and is available. The other sort of bad news here is that it appears that OpenOffice actually isn't really maintained anymore and it looks like there may not be any patches coming for OpenOffice in the near future. There's always something to look for that products, even commercial products, sometimes are sort of silently abandoned by their creators, by the companies behind them, and no longer maintained, which of course usually only becomes an issue once a security vulnerability is being discovered, and then this vulnerability is no longer being patched. If you're running a modern antivirus product, uh, many of them uh, come with a little HTTP proxy that will intercept HTTP connections and scan them for malware as you are connecting to websites. Of course, over the last couple of years, particularly with the arrival of Let's Encrypt, more and more malicious websites are using HTTPS, and this has forced these antivirus products to also intercept HTTPS with their own certificates, which has been problematic all along, but apparently with the release of Firefox 65 recently, this has become even more of a problem because Firefox 65 is more picky in alerting the user about interception and has refused connections to websites if the user used an antivirus product that did intercept HTTPS traffic. It's not really clear what caused the error, but the result so far is that these antivirus engines are not scanning HTTPS. The most likely explanation by reading through the bug report is that an upgrade of SQLite in Firefox caused these antivirus engines to no longer be able to add their own certificates to Firefox's trusted certificates. So uh, that's a possible and likely scenario that could lead to these errors. And Checkpoint looked at a number of popular RDP clients, remote desktop protocol clients, and found vulnerabilities in pretty much 
all of them. And now some of them are straightforward remote code execution vulnerabilities. In Microsoft's RDP client, the issue is a little bit more subtle. It's that the clipboard is being changed shared between client and server. So essentially the clipboard leaks to the server. Now you may wonder, well, why do I care? Well, uh, the problem with this is if you are connecting to an RDP server that you don't 100% trust, which means the RDP server may potentially be compromised. One particular use case uh, Checkpoint points out is malware researchers connecting to virtual machines they're using for research of course, malware is running in these virtual machines. That's why we use virtual machines for it. And it's certainly possible for this malware now to reach out and attack the researcher. And I made a new little uh, tool life uh, today. I call it, well, a global DNS lookup or DNS looking class based on what you sometimes see sort of for BGP and such. What the tool does is, and it's a little uh, web page on the Storm Center website, it does a DNS lookup using a set of globally distributed DNS servers. So you can essentially see if a particular host name is resolved differently in different countries. If you have any feedback to this, it's sort of a beta release at this point, please let me know and I'll be working on this a little bit more if uh, there is a demand for such a tool. Well, uh, that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.